Happy Halloween, everyone! Ladies and gentlemen, we have finally arrived in the acrobatic Silky Arc, and its first episode was incredible. We were introduced to not only the goat Ira, voiced by INA Sakura, but as well, we now know what the cat was in the ending. It's Turbo Granny, so let's break down and talk about the episode. But before that, I want to let you know I have a Dawn to Dawn channel where I cover new chapters weekly called Hey, It's Me, C, where soon I will also be covering Kagurabachi there as well. That's not all. Our last video on episode 4 got 609 likes. Thank you so much. So, I am challenging everyone watching this video to see if we can get it to 630 likes. Use my partner code CTATICS to get 10% off all of your orders of gamer subs. My code also works with free samples, so pick you up some on the house. So, we pick up from the last episode with Momo waiting on Okarun at the school gate as he freaks out. I love the details of the chatter, though, between the students, and it's a great example of how far Science Saru is going with this adaptation to put in such small details. For example, just someone has a weird name. Apparently their name is Vimola. And honestly, I'd love to meet their parents. Let me tell you. Vimola? Weird name. So <laughs> anyways, we got to talk about one of the best aspects of Don to Don in general. And it's something I've talked about on my Don to Don channel before. So this even goes for recent chapters too. The relationship between Momo and Okarun is just one that is so easy to get behind and root for. You see them together and the chemistry is infectious, and I think that's for a couple simple reasons. Case in point, in the beginning of this episode, Okarun is being bullied and talked down to, before he would simply take it and sit silently. However, now Okarun has a different outlook. Since he now has Momo in his life, he feels as if he can withstand anything and even consciously forgives them too for the bullying, which is not easy to do when you're being bullied and ignored, by the way. I mean, the dude absolutely got nailed in the face by that ball. But this relationship works so well well because they support each other as people and give each other strength. The relationship doesn't feel like it's just for the show, or an appeal to a demographic, or is this arbitrary thing that's conjured out of thin air. Their relationship is built on a fundamental trust between one another to be themselves. That allows both of them to be confident in one another more than they ever were before, especially Okarun as we see here. And for Momo it's different, but relatively simple as well. Momo is bored and wants to talk about aliens. She's not working on finding a guy anymore. She's just bored because she wants to talk to Okarun about aliens. I mean, that's a huge difference to what she felt about them previously. She didn't believe in aliens before, but Okarun opened her eyes up to a new world. It also probably helps that she was nearly killed by aliens and kicked down the door of a flying saucer like a badass to save too shy, shy boy. And guess what? Okarun, he's the same. They want to be around each other. They want to talk to each other. And I'm sure everyone has sort of gone through that feeling where you meet a new person and all you want to do is talk to him, you know, and the feeling of it being mutual too. It, it's very common. And I think this episode in the first moments brilliantly conveys what that feels like. A longing for another person, but not overly intense either, but it's, it's that feeling that you just want to be around them that makes us restless and eventually overjoyed when we do get to see them. And yes, I know I just broke down this random moment, but I, I just felt it was so brilliantly conveyed because I'm like that too. I, I develop these pseudo infatuations with people since I meet a lot of people in my daily life. I mean, you probably do as well. Also, gosh dang dude, this episode had some incredible voice acting and this entire opening scene was just so well put together in terms of acting. But this leads to one of the most iconic moments of the acrobatic silky arc, and yes, it happens in the first episode. Both of them begin to look around the school for one another, and it's quite funny, as they are looking around all the while, they don't realize that they've been around each other the entire time. The best part is when they're on benches, sitting across from one another, not realizing if they just turn their heads, they'd see one another. Both of them are down. Okarun thinks he blew his chance. Momo can't find him anywhere. But eventually, they get up to leave, bump into one another, and accidentally kiss. Now, when I first saw this, I was floored at how well this entire scene was handled. There was this kind of bittersweet, almost tenderness to the way they portrayed the characters searching for one another. Uh, to me, it's telling the viewers that alone, these two are weak, but together they are stronger. Once again, yes, I'm nailing that in because I think it's what the, the scene is about. Duh. But Momo cannot function without Okarun in her life and vice versa because without Okarun, Momo is worrying about random dudes and moping about and Okarun can't function without Mo 
Momo because she gives him the confidence he needs to face the world. In essence, these two are the exact same things. They need each other to be their best self. And to me, that is how romance needs to be portrayed, but often falls incredibly short. And the most surprising thing about that is that it's coming from a shonen manga by Yuki Nobu Tatsu about aliens versus ghosts and a gal hanging out with a nerd. It's these weird juxtapositions that end up sending this message that we are all, at the end of the day, human beings. We fight for each other, we love each other, and we hate each other. It's this collective experience, though, that's all built around conveying the message that we are all the same, and we can be each other's best friends if we choose it, no matter who you are. No matter how odd the different worlds we come from seem, at the end of the day, we are all born the same and we die the same, seeking the goal of happiness. And the moment ends with this great show of chemistry as the two bicker back and forth with just great voice acting. I cannot get over this. Just the awkwardness of them being caught kissing by their friends. I mean, the whole thing was just really good with some really good lines. Seriously, you think either or one of them at the very least would be a pushover, maybe Okaroon since he's too shy, shy boy. But no, he calls Momo a bubblehead and Momo calls Okaroon bald for some reason. And maybe she's blind, who knows? I mean, Momo calls Okaroon four eyes. Maybe she needs the four eyes, I, I don't know. And the best part is that Momo's friends realize they're actually pretty tight. After all, there is no better sign of chemistry between two people or a group when you can freely insult each other without hurting each other's feelings. That, my friends, is what we call trust. And they trust each other so much already that they'd be able to banter like this. And yeah, they say they never want to talk to each other again. Mm -mm, okay, we'll see about that one. Nobody is getting off this ship alive. But once again, big ups to the director for the Japanese dub. They totally nailed the cast for this series. I, I just can't get over how amazing the acting was in this episode. Bad news, however, Okaroon, while he got his banana organ back, he's now lost the family jewels in a very strange twist, so... Uh, he, uh, goes to Momo and proceeds to, in front of all of her friends, make this wild and crazy pose. Now, this was just so great, this entire scene, because it was just building upon the last. Momo keeps rejecting Okaroon because she has way too much pride, even though he needs her help. The scene wasn't without comedy, either. Momo's friends are so freaking hilarious teasing her about Okaroon, too. It's very, very fun. Overall, though, this scene just underscored how much they really need each other, but it also underscores that these two are incredibly awkward around each other's still, and are trying to move past kissing each other because they both like each other but are too oblivious or too overwhelmed by the strong connection they have to realize pretty much anything. So Okaroon leaves being rejected once more, but clearly Momo is feeling it too and she didn't want to hurt his feelings, but is too prideful to step down, even though Okaroon did by telling her it was just, you know, some tit for tat. This is when Okaroon runs into a pink-haired stylish girl voiced by none other than the goat Ayane Sakura. She comes off super cute, very nice, and somewhat oblivious and airheaded, but in reality, after bumping into him, she immediately talks crap about him as some nerd and some trash. And we do not call other people trash. No, we do not. Despite her appearance, this girl is just one nasty lady. So we are then introduced to the real goat of the episode, the bucket that Momo drops on her head after seeing how she talks about her boyfriend. This is also where we learn of the girl's name, Ira. I like that name, by the way. It's a really good name. But what is even better is that seeing this, Okaroon thinks that he is some lady killer. I mean, literally. He thinks she passed out because she bumped into him. This is something I really love about Okaroon's personality. He's like this dejected nerd that is treated poorly and still thinks that women fall in love with him left and right, it seems. It's just so funny to me that he has basically no confidence, but he just believes women are just passing out over here, falling for him because of reasons. But best part, Momo stands up for Okaroon and does, you know, the arm to the breast thing, thing and tells Okaroon loud enough for Ira to hear that she deserves wash bins falling for her, not people with charm like Okaroon. And I love this moment mostly because it's not this awkward situation. It's just plainly obvious they like each other and Momo is mad at Ira because she doesn't see what makes Okaroon special. She woke up to his charm and Ira rejected him because he looked like a nerd. Just another example of Momo being such a kind-hearted person and a person who isn't oblivious either. And, and guess what? No annoying tropes, guys and gals. They just like each other, that's it. And yeah, in other scenes, sometimes it's obvious and sometimes it's subtle and sometimes it's a little complicated. I'll figure it out. And all's well that ends well, right? Because Momo apologizes to Okaroon about what she said to him and isn't ashamed of actually being friends with him. It was just so cute. I love them both. I love them all. But they have a big problem. Okaroon is missing his jewels. And so upon hearing this, <laughs> 
Momo just laughs her ass off and they go back to her house to get Seiko's opinion. And Seiko's opinion is that no, she doesn't want to see his junk. She just wants to look inside of him. It's, it is what it is. All the while, Momo is just, <laughs> Oh, Bobo was great this episode, just laughing, rolling on the ground. But things are bad for Okarum because Seiko observes him. She realizes that something is inside of him, so they're going to go do something about it. And just what could be inside of Okarun? And the only spirits we know so far are about, you know, the bound crab spirit and Turbo Granny, though they were both defeated. So they go forward with a ritual in which Seiko <laughs> hits Okarun over the head with a folded piece of paper, yelling at him, calling him dumb. Because of course, this is Don to Don. This is just crazy. But the craziness is all but over. This is Don to Don. The craziest never ends. They eventually are able to transfer this blue flame into a cat doll, which eventually reveals to be none other than Turbo Granny herself. And she, oh my, she is not happy. This granny is foul mouth on the best of days and even tries to get Okaru to kill them all, but it doesn't work. Also, I love how she calls them, calls, calls the two of them bitches. I don't know why that was just so out of pocket and so funny, but this is mostly just because Seiko transferred the consciousness of Turbo Granny to the doll, not her power, so Okarun is now in control of those. So now he can basically transform it anytime he wants and use the powers for himself. However, what's most interesting is that Momo compromised with Turbo Granny and struck a deal with her. If she gives his junk back, well, then she can have her powers back because Momo sympathizes with Turbo Granny trying to save the lives of women who were sexually assaulted. This shows that Turbo Granny wasn't evil. In fact, she heard through the phone Momo being sexually assaulted, that is most likely why she chose to go after Okarun and save Momo. It wasn't exactly personal as they say, it was just a misunderstanding. Except here's the problem, Turbo Granny? <sighs> Yeah, um, she lost Okarun's junk. She doesn't know where it is. And I also found it hilarious. Just this entire scene with the laughing and Momo rolling on the ground, making faces, Seiko beating the crap out of Turbo Granny. I, I just think my favorite part of this episode easily was the voice acting. I think that was the best thing about it. Besides the romance, of course. And let's just be honest here for a moment. Dawn to Dawn episode five really was something special. The romance was on full display in this episode and it shows to people that, hey, this isn't some tropey romance where the two MCs are together just because. No, there is actual chemistry between them that relies on the two being together because without them alone, they are nothing. But together, they are strong and resilient. Plus, I just like the overall message of this episode, which was to not judge people by their appearances or perceived differences. Love one another for their similarities and celebrate those things we have in common. It's as simple as that, really. Good, clean fun. Except for Ira. She deserves the wash basin. That one is for sure. Guys, share in the comments below what you'll be dressing up for as Halloween or what you want to go for as Halloween. And let me know what your favorite Halloween candy is. Mine is Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Ooh, ooh, I'm going to have me some later today. Let me tell you, and I'm going to enjoy it. Also, I challenge you to get this video to 630 likes. And remember to use my partner code to get 10% off your orders of gamer subs. Also, check out my Dawn to Dawn channel where I cover new chapters of the manga weekly. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.